Alright, alrighty. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to choose the best strike price, right? The best strike price that gives you optimal profits at the same time gives you a decently high win rate as well. So this can be for a simple strategy such as the cover call or strategies such as the iron condor, credit spreads, and even when you're choosing strikes for the wheel strategy, right? So before we get into choosing the best strike price, the one thing that you need to understand is that the best strike price can be very subjective because it can be interpreted very differently by different people, right? Some people think that the best strike price is to go for the strike price that has the highest premium, right? But the other person might think that the best strike price might be the one that goes for the highest win rate. So what you need to understand is that this two kind of is the opposite of each other because if you want to have a strike price that has a very high premium, then chances are that the trade-off is that you need to give up a certain percentage of the win rate. On the other hand, if you want a very, very high win rate, then you may have to give up some of the premium as well. And the other thing to understand is that you will never really know the best strike price until after the market has moved. So here's what I mean, right? So Take a look at this chart right now. Let's say, for example, if we were to just put on a very simple trade such as the short put, and I'm going to give you three strikes, right? You're going to have the strike at the $100 strike price. You have another one at $92 and another one at $84, right? Now, obviously, the one at the 100 strike price is going to give you the highest amount of premium. So for this, let's just give $3 signs, right? So we know that this gives the highest premium. Then the one at $92 gives you roughly you know, $2 signs, which is somewhere in the middle, and $84 gives you the least amount of premium out of the three. Then when we talk in terms of percentage win rate, clearly the one at $84 is going to give you the highest percentage win rate. So let's give 3% down here, 3 percentage sign. Down here we're going to have 2% sign, and then here we're going to have 1% sign, right? So when you take a look at these three strikes right now, ask yourself which do you think is the best strike price? Well, the answer is you will never know until the market moves because for example, let's say in the next however many days, which we chose the short put, let's say 30 days, if the market was to expire at this price or above, anywhere above $100, then you're going to say that this is definitely the best strike price because you're going to have the most premium right? You're going to have the most money out of these three strike prices. But what if the market actually went down? What if the market went down somewhere here, settled at $96 at expiration? Then this is going to be the best strike price. Similarly, if the price was to go all the way down to $88, then guess what? You're going to say that $84 will be the best strike price because you win. In the other two uh, strike prices, right? These two other short puts, you're going to lose money at expiration. So at the end of the day, you never really know what the best strike price is until the market has moved. So how do you determine the strike price like this? So in my opinion, the best strike price is the strike that has actually a good balance of a reasonably high probability of profit, yet it gives you enough premium to justify the occasional losses. So whenever somebody asks the kind of question like, which is the best strike price that you know makes me win all the time? that I can never lose. Then the thing is that you need to understand is you will never avoid losses. Losses is just all part and parcel of the game. You may have a strike price that gives you a 99% win rate, but guess what? That 1% will be hit during outlier moves. Like for example, in 2008, when the market crashed, again at 2020, when there's the pandemic crash. So you want to avoid choosing strike prices based on you know having the least chance to lose money because that's not going to happen. So you want to have a good balance. So in order to find this good balance, what is a reasonably high probability of profit as well as what is enough premium? Well, you need to understand two key things for this. So first of all, you need to understand delta, right? So if you're familiar with delta, delta basically just measures the rate of change in the option pricing based on the underlying $1 move of the underlying stock, right? So the other way that you can use delta is that it is actually a very quick way to determine the probability of the strike being in the money. So for example, if you choose a strike price that has 20 delta, that means there's approximately a 20% chance of being in the money, which also means 
there's an approximately 80% chance of being profitable. In other words, 80% win rate. So likewise, for 10 delta, approximately is a 10% chance of being in the money, which also means there's approximately a 90% chance of being profitable. So as you can see, this is the option chain. And down here is the delta, right? So you can see that the delta, the lower the delta also indicates the lower the premium, but is higher in terms of win rate and on the other hand, the higher the delta, you get higher premiums, but slightly lower win rate compared to the lower deltas. All right, so the other thing that you need to know is the expected move. So what's the expected move? Right, I talked about this in detail in another video, but for this video, I just uh, make it very brief. Basically, it's the amount that a stock is expected to either go up or down from its current price by a certain time based on its current level of implied volatility. So there is a formula to calculate the expected move. So generally, if you want a very quick way to identify what's the expected move of a stock, is either you can choose the 16 delta strike price on both the puts and calls. So in this case, this is the 16 delta on the puts. So that means to say by expiration, there is a likely chance that the price will not exceed this 16 delta strike price. Right. So the other way for you to calculate expected move is by using this number down here. Right. So this number down here, up and down, gives you another rough estimation of where the range will be in terms of where the stock will be moving by expiration so there are two ways either by 16 delta or by using this number so for this video just just use the 16 delta strike price so why is this important this is important because theoretically if you were to take the 16 delta strike price on both sides puts and calls the theoretical win rate is 68 percent but historically the win rate is actually higher. So this is a study that has been done. It shows that the actual occurrences that is within this uh, expected move is actually much higher than the theoretical number. So the theoretical number is 68%, but you actually have a much higher occurrence within this range, right? Within this expected move. So what it's trying to say is that if you were to choose the strike price around this expected move, you will have a very decent chance of winning most of the time. So this is our basis to identify the optimum strike price that also gives a pretty decent premium. So therefore, if you want to have a consistent income when you're selling options and you want your strike price to have a lesser chance of getting breached, then you want to choose your strikes around 16 delta, which is maybe anywhere from 15 to 30 deltas, right? So that means a win rate of roughly 85% from the 15 deltas all the way to 70% win rate on the 30 delta. So anyway, between down here is pretty good enough. So if you want to choose a covered call, so for the call side, you want to choose somewhere between 15 to 30 deltas. And if you are doing an iron condor, well, then the short strikes will be somewhere from 15 to 30 deltas as well. Now, what about lesser than 16 delta? Why if you go for like the 10 delta, right? Because if you go for the 10 delta, then you're going to have like a 90% win rate. Well, the thing is that if you were to go for those kind of uh, strike prices that is way below the 16 delta, the chances are that it may not have sufficient premium. And this is pretty important because you need enough premiums uh, to build up enough premiums so that you can weather the occasional outlier loss when it actually happens, right? So for example, cases are like the pandemic crash, 2008, even sometimes during 2018. Well, these are the times whereby you will suffer and incur some losses and you need to have to build up enough premium in order for you to cushion the losses, right? So if you were to choose the delta that is way below 16, chances are that the premium which you have built up up to that point may not necessarily be enough to kind of cushion the outlier loss when you have incurred it, right? So that is why we want to have the sweet spot around 15 to 30 deltas. So how do you quickly identify the 16 delta strike price on the chart? Well, there is a very quick way. By the way, if you like this video so far, please subscribe and also click the thumbs up button and also do get your free copy of the Options Income Blueprint where I share the top three option strategies that help you generate a consistent income each month trading just one to two hours a day, right? So if you want to go ahead to get this copy, just head on over to optionswithdavis.com slash blueprint. All right, back to the video. And the way is by using this indicator called the probability of expiring cone. Right, so this is on the Think of Swing platform by TD Ameritrade. So if you were to go to the platform and you pull out the list of indicators, you will find it 
there, right? It's called the probability of expiring cone. So basically what it does, it, it basically graphs this cone on your chart. So this cone down here basically already indicates where the expected move is going to be on both sides based on the time frame, right? So for example, if you have chosen an option that expires, let's say the 1st of March, so this is the area which you want to look at, right, at this point. So you know that at this point, roughly around the 145 mark, and on the call side, on the upper side, is somewhere around the 160 mark. This is where the expected move is. Right, so this is where you want to use this cone to quickly identify you know, what's the strike price you want to look for when you go to the option chain. Right? Similarly, if you want to look one for somewhere in April, then you want to look for somewhere around here, somewhere down here, and on the call side, somewhere near 170. So how do you use the probability of expiring cone for the different strategies? Right? So first of all, let's say you want to sell a cover call. So let's say you want to sell the cover call, a weekly cover call, that will be somewhere expiring, let's say the 1st of March, all right? Let's just use the example of 1st of March. So 1st of March, basically it will be somewhere down here, right? So because we're looking at the call side. So basically we want to sell the strike price at 160. If you're a little bit aggressive, right? You can go for somewhere slightly lower, maybe 157, 158, anywhere within this range, right? 15 to 30 deltas is pretty good. And let's say if you sell the cover call that is much further out, let's say maybe somewhere in the mid-March, then you'll be going for somewhere around 165 for your strike price. So this is a good way for you to see because as well, you can actually look back at the past uh, historic prices to see where there might be a resistance level. So if you can see down here, there is pretty much a resistance level somewhere around 157. So actually, if you want to sell a cover call, 160 is pretty good because it's above the resistance level. At the same time, it is around the expected move, which we know through statistics that there is a very low chance of it actually expiring above this strike price. All right, so what about using the probability of expiring cone for the wheel strategy? So if you don't already know, the wheel strategy to get into a trade, you always start off with a cash secure put, right? So you sell the cash secure put, once it uh, expires in the money, you get exercise, then you'll be assigned the 100 shares. So where is the best place for you to choose this strike for the wheel strategy? Well, you may say that you know you do not want your cash to put as much as possible to get touched or to get exercised. Well, in this case, then you might want to say, hey, I'm trying to look at the support areas on the chart. So you can see there are many different possible support area. Let's say, for example, you choose this as the possible support area, correct? So let's say this support area, let's say, is around 141. So if it's at 141, then guess what? You want to find the expiration strike price that is below this. So maybe somewhere around 140. So if you look at 140, it is somewhere around close to mid-March, right? So what you want to do is you go to the option chain and you find a strike price in the expiration date there's somewhere around mid-March, right? So if you can find one there, then you can sell the 140 strike price. Or another way is that maybe you, you might be saying that, you know, I don't care about the support and resistance, right? And I'm not worried about this level. I just want to find a weekly time frame to sell it. I want to choose one, then guess what? You can just simply just look at this uh, cone and then just identify based on the expiration date. So again, if let's say you, you sell one in a few days out, maybe somewhere, uh, late February, then it will be somewhere around here. So it's somewhere slightly above 145, then that will be the strike price you use to enter into your cash secure put. Then once you get assigned on the put, similarly, you can use the cone on the call side as well. Now, what about the probability of expiring cone for credit spreads? Again, it's the same thing. So if for the put spread, it will be below or somewhere around this uh, line for the probability of expiring cone. So let's say, for example, in March, you will be selling one here, and then you can buy back one lower for the put spread. And for the call spread, similarly, sell one somewhere along the line, depending on where the expiration date is, and then buy one further out. And finally, what if you're using the probability of expiring cone for the iron condor? Well, actually, pretty much already did it in the last example down here. So basically, the iron condor is just two credit spreads put together. You have the bull put spread on this side and then you have the bear call spread on this side. So as you can see, the probability of expiring cone pretty much already give you the idea of where the expected move is going to be. So instead of going through to your option chain, you can easily plot this out 
on your chart using the indicator and then you can go ahead and choose your strike price on the chart and even just look at the different support and resistance levels to complement you know where you want to choose the strike price based on this code all right guys so i hope you found this video helpful if you have i appreciate if you give me a thumbs up and as well subscribe to my channel so i can create more videos like this for you in the future and as always thank you for watching i appreciate your time and may the options favor you